morning. Welcome to worship. I hope everybody's having a great holiday season. I've enjoyed a lot of Christmas music, and so kicking off our service this morning, we're going to have a special performance by our growing choir, Away in the Manger, which is my son's absolute favorite Christmas song. So. The Lord precepts are right, giving joy to the heart. The Lord's commands are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The joy of the Lord is our, is our strength. strength. You make known to me the path of life and fill me with your joy and your presence. The, the joy, joy of the Lord, Lord is our strength. strength. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and I am helped. <clears throat> My heart leaps for joy, and I will give thanks to him in song. The, the joy of the Lord, Lord is, is our strength. strength. May nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples justly and guide the nations of the earth. The joy, the joy of the Lord, Lord is my strength. strength. Sing for joy to God our strength. <clears throat> Shout aloud to the Lord. The joy, the joy of the, the Lord, Lord is, is our strength. strength. Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. <laughs>
us pray for the whole church of Jesus and for all who need joy today. Lord, before Jesus was born, you sent us your light. You sent John to prepare the way for Jesus to come and save us. Now you send us out as your light to the world. Lord, in your mercy, be, be with, with us, us today. today. When Jesus came, he said he came that we should have his joy so that our joy should be complete. Draw us near to you today and fill us with this wonderful joy. Lord, in your mercy, be with, be with us, us all, all today. today. Dear Father, bless the children this Christmas season. Send workers to tell them the story of Jesus and let them treasure the gifts of love and family. For those who live in difficult situations, use us to supply their needs. Please hear their cries. Lord, in your mercy, be with, be with us, us all, all today. today. Give wisdom and success to our nation and its leaders. Let us be a blessing to all the countries of the world. Hold in mercy all those newly elected and protect all who serve in harm's way, both at home and abroad. Lord, in your mercy, be, be with, with us all, all today. today. Receive our thanks in every circumstance for your kindness in Christ Jesus. Help and help those we now lift up to you in prayer, especially Nancy and Brett, Lord, in your mercy, be, be with, with us, us all, all today. today. Give us faith to believe the new covenant in your blood, to seek your Holy Spirit and confess your truth with honest and open hearts, united in worship together. Lord, in your mercy, be with, be with us, us all, all today. today. Into your hands, Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus, your Son, our Lord, who gives us the boldness to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. In the 61st chapter of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. To bring good news to the poor, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a crown of beauty for ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, and the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. <clears throat> they shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former, de former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will fatally give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their offspring shall be known among the nations, and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are an offspring the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. Here ends the first reading. <clears throat> the second reading is from the fifth chapter of First Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, 
Do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Here ends the second reading. The responsive reading is from Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter. And our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we are so glad. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like desert streams. We sow in tears, but will reap with joyful shouts. He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing in his sheaves with him. His name was John, and he came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to bear witness about the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent the priests and the Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed, and he did not deny, but he confessed, saying, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you a prophet? He said, No. So they said to them, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And John said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. And they asked him, then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? And John answered them, I baptize with water. But one stands among you whom you do not know, even the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. And these things took place at Bethany, across the Jordan River, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. We have had a great series, and after every service, we have a, a wonderful Bible study called Who Needs Christmas? And I think that's going to be postponed. Remember, we have a short con congressional, not congressional, congregational, what Sue said. I had too much of Carol's coffee this morning already. And so every week, we said, Who Needs Christmas? And then we've gone with these wonderful candles. This has been the most exciting Advent I've ever had. And I think it's because Cara ordered bulletins in advance that tell me what is the topic for every Sunday. Because for 10 years, every year, I've got all stressed and had to call my friends and have the pastors remind me and Google what are the Advent candles because they all seem to be different. But this year I knew. It. So I could plan it out and I'm happy. How many of you need that Christmas joy? How many of you are ready for Christmas to get here? Just, you know, shake things up a little bit. I know you're not able to see everybody, but if Thanksgiving was any indication, I have a lot of friends and family who really enjoyed opening the laptops and the tablets and doing the Zoom thing. So we're getting by. But it's so nice to have that Christmas music playing. It's so nice to watch the Hallmark movies. And today we had a little snow. It's just been beautiful. I think that joy, as Pam was reading us in the scriptures today, is the greatest gift besides Jesus that comes out of Christmas. Because it's for everybody, just like Jesus. Everybody gets happy at Christmas. C.S. Lewis said, if you think about it, the business of heaven. You think, what is, what's heaven for? We're going to be there a long time. What are you going to do? He said, the serious business of heaven 
is making joy. I love that idea. Like our only job. What's your job? Well, my job was I was going to sit around and watch TV, but I think I'm going to go out and make people happy. I'm going to make myself joyful. I'm going to spread joy. Basically, he's saying that heaven is Christmas 365 days a year. He, C.S. Lewis went on to say something I thought was very powerful. He said the day is going to come. Basically, he's saying this whole idea of whether we're joyful or we're not joyful, it's not going to last. He said the day will come when either joy prevails and the makers of misery. You have to make yourself miserable. You have to make other people miserable. It doesn't happen naturally. He said either the day will come when joy prevails and the makers of miserable misery will no longer infect it. Or they will destroy in others the happiness that they reject for themselves. Joy is a sign at Christmas that Christ Jesus is cradled in your heart. It's really hard. Well, I was going to say it's really hard to be upset when there's a baby around. Okay, forget the crying and the diapers, but, you know, when you first see them. Let's say you're the grandmother, grandfather, you see that first child, it's just cute as a button, right? Even though they all look kind of like Winston Churchill. Which is... <laughs> when you hold that baby, Martin Luther said, you can't be upset. Martin Luther said, that's why God came as a baby. Because it opens the door to that joy. And so Thessalonians reminds us to rejoice always. And you heard what Pam said. Rejoice always comes before pray without ceasing and give thanks in all things. And the Bible said this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. A lot of you wonder, what does God want? You know, we had a big election. What did God want with that? Here I am in a my work life or my retirement life, what does God want from me? I'm in school. I'm planning my future. What does God want from me? What is God's will? And right here, very simply, it says, just have my joy. Rejoice without stopping. Now, no matter what happens, joy is going to make things better for you and me. It's like oil in the gears. It just helps things run smoother. It does not make the bad things go away. But it does dampen them a little bit. I walk the dog a lot. And as it gets colder here in Illinois, I have to put on a coat, right? Joy is like that coat. You know, it just keeps you warm and snuggly. It's not perfect. It doesn't change the whole world, but it makes you happy. I remember there was an old joke about a guy had a horrible pain, went to the doctor. doctor checked him out. He said, I just can't find what's causing your trouble, but I think it may be due to the drink. And the patient said, well, then I'll just come back when you're sober. I have never seen a family fall apart or a church fight when they're full of joy. You just can't do it. It's hard to fight when you've got a smile on your face. One of the best, there's a lot of marriage counseling out there. My opinion, it's not worth its salt. It's just not worth it. It may make them better a little bit, but it doesn't last the long term. But there is one group, I love this group. They said what you need is a vacation. And they made these condos for people. And they said, you can stay for a long weekend free of charge. Meals provided, knock yourself out. The only condition is they put cameras virtually everywhere in the condos. And they watched them. And they just watched how they act. And then over time, over months and years, they found out which couples were happy and which ones weren't. And one of the key things that happy couples, successful marriages did, that in the midst of a fight, in the midst of a disagreement, in the midst of the blood starting to boil, one of them would crack a joke. One of them would say something funny. One of them would remember something that made them smile and laugh. And it just kind of leaks out the tension. When Jesus was walking this earth, they asked him, what are you here for? They didn't just ask John. They said, Jesus, what are you here for? And what did Jesus say? Stacy read it in our prayer. He said, I came that you should have my joy and your joy should be complete. A lot of us think big salvation issues, save the whole world. But when you ask Jesus personally why he came, he said he came to make you happy. He came that you could have joy in every situation. Because God does not like people who are always grumpy. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. It does not say he loves a rich giver. A generous giver, a faithful giver, a holy giver. He just likes you to be a cheerful giver. Whatever you do, give till it makes you happy. Give till it feels good. You know, they say give till it hurts. Don't give till it hurts. 
Give till it feels good. How do we get happy? How do we get this joy? I have a friend who is of retirement age, and I don't know if you know, but Medicare open enrollment, did anybody experience that? Okay, so I tried to call her and call her, and I couldn't get a hold of her because she had turned the phone off. It did not make her happy getting calls about insurance all the time. I don't mind getting calls from strangers. I love finding out about my, my car warranty that is not expired. <laughs> Ever since my good friend in Nigeria stopped sending me emails, I have really felt an emptiness in my soul. <laughs> but one thing that does make me happy is when somebody calls me, whether they got a problem or they just want to talk to me, somebody that likes me, right? I love getting a call. That makes me happy. And today in the scripture, the Bible says that God is calling you. Thessalonians said, and he who calls you is faithful because he will surely do it. God is calling you. He's calling, he's tapping every one of you. And he's not just calling you to say hi, he's calling you to give a gift. He's calling because he wants to do something amazing in your life. He's calling to give you a present. That present is free, but here's the thing. Sometimes you have to be willing to let go of what you're holding on to in order to have room for that new present. I find it very difficult to be glad and sad at the same time. I'm not saying you can't be. But one sort of kind of washes over the other a little bit. I think part of our Christian walk has to be a willingness, not that we can do it, we can't do it, but a willingness to let go of some of the hurts and some of the hates and let that joy come in. Today, Pam read a scripture, which is one of my favorite prophecies. It's one I repeat to myself often. It says, God will give us a crown of beauty for our ashes. You have to be willing to let go of those things that have burnt down and messed up and fallen apart. He will give you oil of gladness instead of mourning. He will give you garments of praise in place of a faint spirit. How many of you have gone through life and things have gone really bad at some point, And you're just like, oh, I just can't take any more of this. That's a faint spirit. And the only one that can jack you up is the joy of Jesus. You can't do it. If you could do it, you wouldn't be sad, right? But you have to be willing. Are you willing to give up some of those ashes, some of that mourning, and some of the fainting? And in place, get the crown, the oil, and the garment of praise. First of two acronyms for the day, crown, oil, and garment spells cog. Does anybody know what a cog is? Cog in the wheel? It's part of a machine, part of a tool. It's not the thing that has the power. It's not the thing that does the work. It's just a little tooth-notch groove on the side of the wheel. It's the way that it catches on to the power and transfers it to what you want to do. Joy is that part, that little cog inside that catches on to God's power and lets you do the things you have to do. These gifts that God is calling you to give you are tools to do things. I think of guys at Christmas getting tools, and I, I've tried my best, but I came up with women getting vacuum cleaners and blenders, and I'm pretty sure that wasn't the way to go in the sermon. But guys like getting tools for Christmas. I love getting tools. Although one tool I'm getting is I am the top bidder on the women's circle Christmas platter set, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to win because I, I have my eye on that. But feel free to outbid me. These great tools that God gives us are so we can do something. Not so we can just sit around and talk about it. There's an old definition of what is a committee. Committee. A committee is a group, no offense, Stacy, that keeps minutes but loses hours. God's not here just trying to keep you busy, right? He's trying to get you energized to get out and do something because he wants you to become an oak of righteousness. Pam said you will be called an oak of righteousness. And you may look at your life and you say, well, I'm just a shriveled up little acorn. Well, maybe we're all nuts, right? But he sees our potential, and he calls us mighty oaks of righteousness. He says that God will repay our losses, and you will build up the ruins, you will raise up the devastations, and you repair the people and places around you. Psalms today says that God will restore our fortunes, and that we will reap the benefits. He said we will reap shouts of joy, and then twice he says you will come home with shouts of joy. There may be times in your life when you come home and you don't have joy. 
Maybe you lost someone. Maybe there's a difficulty. Maybe there's a challenge. Maybe you've got some sort of bad medical report. I know uh, Wayne was going to be here today, and he had a tummy ache or something, and he had to go to the, the doctor's office this morning early, so keep him in your prayers. I don't think it's serious, but it was to the hospital. Yeah. But he promises no matter what's going on, you will come home with joy. I don't know if you remember those commercials at Christmas, and they were all the same, basically. They were a story about someone that couldn't get home for Christmas, right? And halfway through the commercial, we're bawling because, you know, this, this daughter or son or husband or wife has somehow made it through the snow, and they get there, and the lights are on. And that's what God promises us. But he calls us, and he equips us with those tools. He gives us those gifts for a reason, and the reason is to send us. I don't know why I keep looking over at Sue. I just sort of, I think because there's this big swath of hole right there in the middle there that um, don't want you to feel left out. The gospel reading started with these words. There was a man sent from God. And you know that's John. You know he's talking about John. But he's also talking about you. There's not a man or woman in this room that I do not know for a fact has been in my life and is being sent by God to do things. Every single one of you. John said, though, the job we do is sometimes difficult. A couple weeks ago, I just started having this sentence from John in my head, and there's a similar one to Jesus. He says something very similar, but nicer. John said, the axe is laying at the root of the tree, and every tree that does not produce fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Now, I've been here as the interim pastor for nine months, right? I have no idea what kind of baby we're birthing at the end of this, but one of my jobs is to cut and clear a path just like John. That's, there's only two jobs an interim pastor has. And there's supply pastors who's coming. You're either here to comfort people, which the scripture said a lot about today, if there's been a hard time, and we had that. Remember when Pastor Cheryl was here? Her job was to comfort. And the other is to clear a path, clear up things, to cut, clear up things. So the, the council offered me to come here. They said, we want you, and this is the very top lines of their request, prepare for the arrival of the new pastor. That sounds a lot like John's job with Jesus coming. They wanted me to help work through the history and the dynamics of change to identify current issues and cut through them and then align the congregation with the Constitution. Very, very simple directions. But the job was to cut. The thing is, we don't have joy because life is easy. We don't have tools because the job is easy. In fact, we have the tools because the job is really hard. We have the joy because life is really hard. In Isaiah 43, God speaks to the prophet and says, You will go through deep waters and difficult rivers, but when you do, you will not drown. And when you walk through the fire of oppression, the flames and blame, I like to say flames and blame, they will not consume you. Why? For I am the Lord your God. And it is the Lord's joy, like a fireman's fire suit or a diver's scuba diver outfit, that protects you from that fire and water. The Bible does not say you will not get wet. It does not say you will not feel the heat. It says it will not consume you. It will not drown you. The joy of the Lord is saving you. Isaiah 14, 27 says it this way. Who can thwart what the Lord is doing? So I'm going to close with this very easy thing. I probably said this three or four times this year already. How do we get a hold of this joy? And joy is simple. You focus on Jesus, then you focus on others, and then you make sure you focus on yourself. A lot of folks focus on themselves first. What's in it for me? My pleasure. C.S. Lewis, I don't know why I'm quoting him so much today, but he said, I sometimes wonder whether all the pleasures people seek are not substitutes for the joy that God gives. Because joy is never in our power, but pleasure often is. A lot of people also, they focus on others or they focus on Jesus, but they'll never get to taking care of themselves. You have to have time to take care of yourself. But you've got to have those in order. And you've got to start with Jesus, who said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no one comes to the Father except by me. And that word comes, I'll close with this one thought. In the Greek language, they don't have verbs that are just active. He does that. Or that was done to them. 
Active and passive. You're familiar with that, of course. They have something called middle, which is in the middle. It means both. And this word comes is in the middle voice. It means you are the person that's doing the action, but also you are receiving the gift. You are the cause and you are the focus. You are the agent and you are inside the experience. Jesus is saying, I am the only way that you go to God. But it's not a one-way street. You have to participate. You have to be willing to receive that joy and exercise that joy and do with that joy, use the tool that God's given you. I remember one time I bought a, oh, what did I buy? A, a circular saw. I was, I was renovating a house that I moved into and uh, basically rebuilding all the inside. You know how that is. And I got the circular saw, and I don't usually do inside the house work, right? And so I've got my table sort of set up in the kitchen, the dining room area, and I'm cutting something. I don't remember what. And my circular saw, you know, those things cut through wood just as easily as they cut through the power cord attached to it. I found that out. You're welcome. That's free information. Make sure that you're not cutting yourself off. From the real joy that's going to help you get, not through this season of Christmas, but through this, who knows how long this COVID is, is going to continue, and in the coming years. So as we turn our attention this Christmas to focus on Jesus and Jesus alone, I would invite you to rise and sing our Christmas hymn, which is somewhere in my writings, Hark the Glad Sound, the Savior Comes. thanksgiving what you have first given us ourselves our time and our possessions signs of your gracious love receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us jesus christ our lord amen the lord be with you, also with you. if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins god who is faithful and just will Forgive us all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed... Jesus took bread 
and he gave thanks. And he broke it. And he gave it for his disciples, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the common cup. And he said, this cup is the new covenant, the new testament in my blood. And my blood is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. I knew a man who became a Christian later in his life. And every time he came forward and heard those words spoken, you would have thought that he was at a football game and his side was winning. He got so full of joy, the idea that Jesus Christ came and gave himself, gave his body, gave his blood, gave his life for you and me to have the love and forgiveness that he's given us, that he would literally start to shout at the communion room. This is the body of Jesus broken for you. This is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Jesus didn't die for nothing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in his joy this Christmas season and the whole new year long. Amen. Amen. Would you please remain standing as we join in singing one of the greatest Christmas songs, Angels from the Realm of Glory. <clears throat> spirit of joy in his presence. Go forth in his joy today. Amen. 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 Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you, God. Please get settled and arranged. Uh, we were going to have a meeting at 1015.